So employment and uh, service animals, so Title I of the ADA covers employment and SA uh, service animals are considered, they are considered a reasonable accommodation. So an employee or tenant, whoever, must request that the service animal be present as a reasonable accommodation for their disability. So this, that statement, I go back, that is for service animals. So here's a question, do the same rules apply to a customer bringing their service animal into a store govern a service animal accompanying an employee to their job? Well, as we go back of Title II and Title III of the ADA, uh, service animals can go uh, in, most typically emotional support animals can go anywhere that um, the public can go unless they're out of control, they're not potty trained, they're aggressive, but with employment, and they don't need a reasonable accommodation, but with employment, they do. You must have a reasonable accommodation and the same thing for housing. So uh, again, in general, uh, the employers are expected to grant accommodation request if the employee's disability and the service animal function are related. So if you have uh, PTSD, uh, if you have a psychiatric uh, service animal and, uh, or you have epilepsy and, and the dog is trained for a specific task. So if they notice, um, they can sense when an episode is coming on, they're trained to, uh, you know, go under the person as they're having a seizure so that they can fall down on the animal and not hurt themselves. So, or uh, an animal can sense if a person with di uh, diabetes, uh, their, their sugar, their blood is, is fluctuating uh, and they can alert the handler. Uh, so the service animal has had sufficient training to not be disruptive uh, presence in the workplace. They're not wandering around. Uh, if it's a service animal and they're working, you will most likely not know that they're there. They, uh, they are, they go most service. I know of two or three service animals that have gone through about uh, two years of intensive training uh, by an agency. But again, a service animal can be trained by their handler or another person that they do not have to be certified. Um, and, the, and of course, the accommodation does not present an undue hardship. So who cares? So if you have an emotional support animal or a service animal at work, what are the responsibilities? And you get the reasonable accommodation. So the employee is responsible for the care and monitoring of the animal. The employer, however, may not uh, may need to make accommodations that allow the employee to attend to necessary tasks as to where, where is the animal going to relieve themselves? Um, you know, do they need a break to stretch just like we do? Um, so the ADA, it does not require specifically require, uh, for an agency or the handle to create, uh, a relief area, just finding a place, even if it's, uh, you know, a strip of carpet, um, even if it's what they call the puppy pads. Uh, and a service animal can be trained to use an area that is paved, such as an alley. The employee is, is responsible for the cleanup of the animal.